Hello, pet parents and pet lovers. Uh, welcome here for another uh, live session today. This is a much awaited session that we have here today on all you need to know about Labradors. So uh, I have our expert today, uh, Mr. Amrut S. Hiranya. Hi, Amrut. How are you today? I'm doing well. Hello, all viewers. Uh, hello, uh, um, hello, PetFed and uh, Purina ProPlan. Yeah. Uh, so Amrut is popularly known as Amrut Dog Guru. He is the only Indian canine behaviorist from Unitech, New Zealand. And he's also the appointed advisor for the CRPF, for the police dog force and the railway police force. Uh, that's quite a resume, Amrut. <laughs> that and much. that and it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Amrut is also the uh, first Asian to have given a TED talk on canine behavior. Also the first Asian to receive the Australia or Australia's uh, Dog Whisperer Award. So he's, I think, the most apt person for uh, the chat today. Uh -huh. So. Thank you. Uh, uh, friends, we're discussing Labradors today, right? Uh, now, whenever you bring in a dog into your family, it's a very uh, big decision. It's a decision for a lifetime. You cannot go back on that decision. So you must take a conscious, a well-informed decision. So if you're a parent of a Labrador or if you're looking to get a new dog in your life and you're thinking of labs, then this is the place to be. This is where you're going to get all that information. You can get like a checklist and take make all the ticks and think of how a lab is going to be the perfect fit into your house. Labs are generally easy to train. They're lovely to live with. But that's not all that is there in a Labrador. There is so much more. There is history. There's a specific skill set. And there are extraordinary facts about them. So we're here today to discuss all of that. So everyone who's here now, uh, you can just drop in any queries that you have about Labradors in the comment section below, and we will answer them for you shortly. Another really cool thing that we're doing today in the chat is a trivia contest. We've been doing these for a couple of chats, so you should be uh, you know, aware about these by now. But what we do in the trivia contest is that I will ask you three questions throughout the chat. There are only three questions that I will ask you, and you need to give the correct answers of those questions in the comments section. Three lucky winners who give all three correct answers get super gift hampers from Purina Pro Plan India. So just listen up and stay alert. All right, everybody. Uh, in the meanwhile, I think Amrut and I will start off with uh, a couple of basic things that we must know about this breed. So Amrut, uh, my first question to you is quite the basic one. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of Labradors, how they originated and uh, how have they evolved in this time from their original, you know, uh, origination to now and they've earned the name uh, the title for the most popular dog breed in various countries how has that come out to be basically the breed uh, started at the late 17th century where uh, they were used uh, as a sporting dog in the country newfoundland so primarily they were also known as newfoundland for a couple of years then and later they were brought uh, to england by the fishermen in the 18th century so that's when they moved on uh, it was almost uh, a little later mid 18th century is when uh, they were named as a labrador so earlier to that they were also known as the saint john's dogs so okay this is uh, the history they've been extremely good at sporting they now fall under the gun dog group so or the hunting group both of them so that's a little bit of a briefing on how they evolved. So these are short-coated uh, dogs called the Labradors. And because of the sporting and from the uh, fishing to the gun dog group, they've added a retriever because they're used to retrieving the hunt. So okay. that's the evolution of Labradors. Okay, so how are it they was, are the most... Yeah, tell me. It was, it, it was in fact, much, much later, uh, by the 19th centuries, when they got the actual name as Labradors. Till okay. then they had different names. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's lovely. And uh, how did they, you know, get the name of the title of the most popular dog breed in various countries? See, basically, it is their nature. They're one uh, very uh, fast in learning. They're very uh, obedient. They're loving dogs. They're good companions, and they they fall under the utility, as in they're the sporting group. Because of their sporting, they 
uh, we are again talking going back to the 18th century early 18th century so then uh, bird uh, shooting birds or retrieving birds for uh, their food for human beings for their food ducks fishes chickens these sort of uh, birds were basically uh, a staple diet for people in england basically england and later moved to canada so this was more a need then than a want the labradors because they needed to hunt for their food and or it then came out to the sports so they they all uh, there was a need and uh, much later earl a lady by name earl is the one who loved the breed and started ca calling them she just called them like labradors and newfoundland could not be a name because we had two newfoundlands there so we have a breed called newfoundland and okay. earlier these dogs were also called newfoundland because they originated in newfoundland so they had to rename them so st john's dogs came into it st john's fishers fisherman's dog was another name given so that way slowly from newfoundland to st john's fisherman dogs to just fisherman dogs and then came the labrador and added the retrieving because of the retrieving sport labrador retrievers okay all right that's nice to know and uh, like you said the labradors are from the hunting breed group right so uh, this is why we see a lot of we hear a lot of labradors as heroes in uh, police and military work so can you tell me a little bit more about this and if you have certain uh, personal instances you know with uh, hero labradors can you tell me about that perfect see i have been in close contact with uh, our war hero our uh, uh, brigadier sunil sharma he was uh, the commander in chief for the operations that happened with the taj attack so uh, discussing few things with him we also understood uh, our uh, dogs like sultan we had caesar we had couple more dogs like them who participated extremely well during those one two three days of the operations when the nariman point taj and uh, oberoi they they were all attacked uh, by the terrorist so here uh, going back to how a sporting or a hunting dog turns out to be war heroes today is there are a lot of questions people do ask like uh, why is that it's, is it a hunter dog that's why they could hunt down terrorists no these dogs are not assault dogs assault dogs are belgian shepherd malinois dobermans rottweiler german shepherds who go for the bite work where they go and attack a person these labradors we utilize when we train a labrador for bomb detection drug detection or tracking why do they do it see when we talk about a sporting dog like a fisherman's dog or a dog now i shoot a bird we expect a labrador in the 18th century to go find the bird using their nose hold the bird in their mouth which is probably not dead as yet which is still moving hold it and bring it back retrieve it so there are three different drives in a dog that is being used there one their hunt drive their prey drive and their play drive or play drive is also known as their game drive so one of it all these three put together brings in the sport in the dog or even the fisherman's dog now a labrador could go sit in the water play with them and hold a fish why is it holding a fish though despite the fact that he may not get the whole fish to eat immediately so it is that they they are observing something that's moving fast capture the thing that's the prey drive that's moving fast hunt drive to track down the sense of where it is fallen or where the bird is because when the bird is shot flying it's a very far away distance so we ourselves would not know 2 300 or a uh, kilometer far away that the bird shot has fallen there so the dog had to use their nostrils to track point number okay. one and then retrieve the game or the toy and then hold it in the mouth or capture something that's moving fast all this put together dogs are trained on these drives that if you are able to track the scent of a person who has done a crime and who's ran away so they use for tracking one that starts with that second track the identify the scent of a narcotic or an explosive chemical that the dog is trained on because their olfactory bulbs are good and they're easy trainable they would identify the scent track the scent once these two things are done comes their sporting so what do they get in return they get a treat or they get a kong they get a ball they're retrievers mm -hmm. so the moment the dog finds a bomb smells sits down without touching it we throw a ball so this all this put together we call it as chaining so it is sent connected to track then connected okay. on the other way to the toy that goes and then the dog doesn't take the ball and run away the dog takes the ball and come back to us so that we throw it again so that's the sport like how they used to get fishes and then birds and now they do it for their toys okay 
because they want to capture something that's moving fast right why are they such good swimmers they are swimmers that's why they turned out to be labrador retrievers today labrador retrievers are the most happiest to be in water they want to go swim Mm -hmm. right so that's because the genotype the origin that they love to be in water their coat condition in a way that they could be in water their body is made in a way that they can swim comfortably cycle now when we tell swim it's not splashing water which happens when dog is splashing water it clearly tells you that the dog is not comfortable in water so pushing your dog labrador into water and taking pictures is a nice thing but not when they're splashing so it it is uh, it it takes time where, where we have beaches like people in mumbai their labradors or golden retrievers are great swimmers because they were not thrown into the ocean from the bridge whereas they went on the beach so from walking they get to cycling in water cycling in water is what helps their boning because later when i'm talking about their disabilities like el elbow dyslexia hip dyslexia arthritis obesity these are common issues that our labrador faces swimming helps a lot provided your dog enjoys swimming so a process of getting your dog to enjoy swimming is very important rather than pushing them into water and just splashing water around and then we take pictures so that's not how it goes so like i told you the game drive that they have to come back what is a game or a play drive is that we have few breeds of dogs or few dogs who have less of play or game drive how do we understand this if you give a toy to your dog he goes under a bed and starts chewing it um and not wanting to give it he's possessive like yeah. the bulldog the french bulldog or the british bulldog they're very possessive they don't want to give away our rottweilers they're very possessive they don't want to give away they're the possessive breeds and right? they're okay. bred to be possessive labradors aren't very possessive they're not possessive at all one out of 100 maybe because of how we have grown them other or due to inbreeding otherwise they are the sporting dog because they have the game or the play drive in them that they want to come back to the owner Mm -hmm. That's why they retrieve and come back. They didn't take the fish and run away. They didn't take the short bird and they sat there eating it and growled at the hunter when he came. You know, he they brought the bird back. So that's the play play of the game drive. That's very important because all the war heroes. The question was about war heroes or the dog war yeah. hero, dog heroes, heroic dogs. They are heroes because they're a squad. If they find a bomb, they can't defuse it. They have to inform the handler by showing the prescribed. Uh, 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 we we have two two types of the way the dog show one is an active response one is a passive response for mm -hmm. narcotics it is an active response where the dog can scratch or bark at a suitcase in an airport that has drugs in it they can even scratch they can even bark whereas for an explosive after the 90 uh, 1990 uh, uh, that's th three decades ago uh, when the mobile revolution came in so active response earlier for bombs also was given where the dog could bark now the dog is not supposed to bark they just supposed to sit smell and sit not above not on but beside Next. the scent so that they don't yeah. touch it their touching or barking or scratching could instigate the explosion which is a yeah. microchip this uh, the development happened uh, post the mobile revolution so passive response to be given why because they found the scent for which their sporting thing comes out now we throw a ball we give you a kong we give you a treat mm. for which they would do it so labradors are particularly good to do both they could do narcotic they could do explosive detection and they've gone way ahead uh, for blind guide dogs cancer detection covid detection lot more so they're not only war heroes they are life saving heroes yes yes that is correct thank you amrit for that um now let's just take a short break from this and uh, i would like to announce the first trivia question so everybody uh, hear up really really carefully my first trivia question is what is not what is not a possible color for a labrador option a chocolate option b silver okay what is not a possible color for a labrador option a chocolate and option b silver all the right answers and a little bit of the wrong ones please come put them in the comment section below and we'll be back with the second one soon moving on amrut i have many questions for you uh, my next question is this that um, what was the original purpose for which the labradors were you know uh, bred and now how has that purpose evolved over time what are they now being used for this is something that you did get into just a little while back tell me more about that what is their purpose now 
See, earlier, like I just spoke, they were the fisherman's dog, they were uh, the hunting dog, they were the dog used to track back. Now, like I told you, for the fisherman's dog, see, we've got, today they're used for guide dogs, they use the sniffer dogs, therapy dogs, companions, and police dogs. Now, sniffer dogs have to use their olfactory bulb, the scenting, like the earlier days, they were used to track the bird that was fallen way far away, meters away. So the same... Uh, ability of a dog, expertise of the dog Labradors then, today are used to track as sniffer dogs, find explosives, find narcotics. With the police dogs, they're sporting. What they used to capture the fish, like the fisherman's dog earlier, now they capture a toy for doing a task as a reward. When it comes to guide dogs, therapy dogs, or companions, all the three needs a lot of patience, persistence, calm, and assertive. Not aggressive, assertive. So calm and assertive breed, the number one breed would be the Labradors. Now, these dogs, despite being into the sports, they are able to control their energy levels. So every guide dog, every therapy dog, people do ask, they are sporting dog, can they be comfortable? Can they just be so calm and peaceful? They can be because they also have in their routine regime of exercise. Now, when Labradors can be great blind guide dogs or therapy dogs, why is that my dog, my Labrador at home always keep jumping around all the furnitures? That is because there they know their 40 minutes of running in the morning, 40 minutes of running in the evening. That is not probably given by the blind person or the person who's undergoing therapy it's given by somebody else so they put the dog on the treadmill a dog treadmill and see to it that they've got their exercise so the energies are extremely well balanced and second if you see in all these three or four five pictures none of these dogs look obese which means that they get the proper nutrition and they get the proper exercise that is why they are so well balanced now, uh, probably down the lane uh, during the session, we will talk about their health, their nutrition, and their exercising as well. So the earlier utilization of their scenting abilities are used for sniffing. Their earlier utilization of their sporting abilities are used for police dogs. And their calm and assertive, fast learning, and confident behavior in them today are used for guide therapy and friendly companion uses. OK. All right. That sounds great. And that's something to know about them that they can be used in a versatility of purposes and very true, uh, in a very calm true. position as well in a sporting position as well which is a very versatile uh, breed i must say mm, my next question is that you know labs are a very popular breed and mostly whenever someone's thinking about adopting a dog they do uh, choose labs as their uh, first option but how can one truly know that a lab is a perfect fit for my house. All right. Now, more than the house or the area, when we call it as a house, is it an apartment? Is it a bungalow? Is it an independent uh, site? Or is it a farmhouse? More than all that, what we need to understand here is what is the amount of exercise a Labrador requires? Now, if I'm a sporting person, I normally go for a jog every morning for an hour. Then you can go for a Labrador even if you have a single bedroom apartment because the one hour of jog given to him as well as proper proper diet. Now, proper diet for we Indians is a lot of food. That's not how it goes, right? Labradors are food-driven dogs. So if we give them the optimum food and nourishment and the exercise, they can be a good dog to any sort of a house it could be an apartment it could be a large probably two or three acre of a farmland because they have the sporting instinct in them they're going to chase away other animals they're going to be good and the ability of being good uh, confident and assertive also helps them to be good uh, companions at homes so more than the area or the house we are looking at what we require uh, to give more importance here is the exercise they get and the nutrition they they are giving if both are balanced, they could stay in a single bedroom apartment to a big bungalow or even a farmhouse very comfortably. When you're choosing a Labrador, do remember that they not all Labradors are great guard dogs by birth. They are companion dogs by birth for sure. So if you want your Labrador to also guard your property, you will have to train them on that a little bit or motivate them for everything when they guard at the beginning.
because we bring in a dog that is a more a companion and because they are so cute and cuddly at uh, at a puppyhood what happens every every friend of yours who comes home plays with the dog and we indirectly teach the dog that every time there's somebody at home they're going to give you a lot of love and affection and later we blame them after they your year old they we had a theft at home and my labrador did not do anything see you have trained him to be a companion so yeah one the breed is a companion breed so if you're looking out for a guard dog you will have to less socialize him and encourage him every time he barks or stops an intruder coming so that's when he gets to know that this is what is expected out of me the advantage of a labrador is that he is able to guard your house provided you train him to do the needful all right training i think is the key if you're not training your dog well and in the right direction you cannot expect him to do something else okay so that is the key uh i have another trivia question everybody so trivia time again uh, question number 2 is uh this is it true or false that labradors have particularly waterproof fur coats i repeat is it true or false that labradors have particularly uh waterproof fur coats option 1 is true and option 2 is false please put in your question answers in the comment section coming back uh, to you amrut uh, my question to you now is that what are the physical traits and characteristics uh, that are true to a labrador what makes a labrador a labrador in terms of appearance uh, we have certain shades of their eyes that uh, is easy to identify even during their puppyhood because that doesn't change but coating they could be labrador puppies who are fawn in color could get a little yellow as they grow they could be white that turns to yellow or yellow that turns to a little white now as given here very clearly they are all short coated their life span is 10 to 12 years provided see on top what is written is ideal characteristics so if you are an ideal owner i am sure your labrador would live up to 12 years ideal owner should be giving them ideal exercise ideal amount of food ideal amount of grooming all this put together makes you an ideal owner so the dog can live comfortably for 12 years now coming back reason being we also see that they are high energy dogs so if we do not spend their energy then maintaining them in the weight of 30 to 36 kilos is impossible because i very seldom would find labradors between 30 to 36 kilos especially especially if they are an adult an adult is more than 24 26 months any labrador who's four or five years most of them other than the police dogs i see would uh, be a little on the obese side because they're food driven dogs so we have to see to that maintaining their weight height is not in our hand it goes on their father and mother for the breed that is a 22.5 to 24 inches females 21.5 to 23 inches but uh, and uh, we know the temperament they're very friendly they're very outgoing when we mention outgoing they they would want to meet and greet anybody who comes so that is their genotype again if you want them to be friendly if you want a dog who's going to be friendly you're social you want all your friends and relatives to pet them this is the perfect breed for you to go ahead for these are okay. ideal characteristics and they're high energy dogs very much that's exactly why i meant because if we have complaints on the dog remember they are high energy dogs so before you get one or if you have one rather than complaining on their energy levels that they are running around we have to understand that they are running around because their breed is a high energy breed so we have to give them enough exercise failing which they'll either put on weight see there is a balance here so if if you if you if they when when they are high energy their dietary needs has to be taken care of properly that's not overfeeding it is optimum feeding if that's not done then we will obviously not have them a complete life span so we need to understand that high energy dogs need more of energy utilization and depending on the energy utilization is when the energy intake happens as in if you're giving them less exercise you'll have to give them less food if you're giving them more exercise you'll have to give them more food we normally as a human nature we feel that if we are not able to give them enough attention then we start feeding them more for example they do they require our presence and exercise rather than presence that we bring back home with okay today i'm late so i'll buy, buy a chew stick for him i'll buy a bone for him and make him feel happy that you i was not with you for the last couple of hours now that's not how it works it is the amount of exercise and the grooming time you give the time you mm-hmm. give your present for them is what uh, goes as a treat correct okay. ideally that's when we have a long lived happy dog makes sense 
Okay. And what are the essential grooming needs for a Labrador? See, we have to understand Labradors have short fur. Why I mentioned short and fur is because people have a misconception then they start blaming the dog that my dog is always shedding. Fur is something that would obviously always shed, which otherwise means people who have a golden retriever or a German Shepherd or a Saint Bernard who have long hair, long hair, short fur, two different words there. So short fur is like your tamarind tree leaf that always keeps falling. They're tiny leaf, tiny hair, fur that always keeps falling. Whereas the longer one is like your coconut tree leaf that doesn't fall always once in a year because they're long and strong. So people who have allergies or they have concerns, then do not go for the short hair furry breeds because they always fall. Now, always fall is not too much. Shedding period is different for all dogs. Once or twice in a year, seasonally, they would shed. But these dogs would always have a hair fall. Now, what do we do is if you they are again, we also spoke about a trivia question about I'm not going to give the answer. The trivia question about their coating conditioning, we have to remember that these dogs are very comfortable with water. So if you want to wash your dog regularly, wash them only with water and you can use your soap and shampoos probably once in 30 days or little more than that. You can weekly wash them with just plain water, not even hot water, plain water that keeps their coat condition comfortable there and uh, more than washing every day a grooming which would not take you for a Labrador is the least grooming you require. Remember to use a metal brush why am I mentioning again a metal brush, plastic or comb that we use is not going to work for your dogs. Dogs have dogs and horses need a metal brush because like we have sweat glands, they have oil glands. So there's oil secreted on the scalp that using a metal brush would apply it all over their hair, makes their hair strong. What we do, we wash them with soaps and shampoos that will remove the oil from their hair. That makes their root weak and there is a lot of hair fall. So because there is hair fall, we keep on changing the shampoos and removing more and more of oil. It does not help. We give them a lot of nutrition. We have a lot of syrups today, nutrition supplements for better coat given in omega-3 fatty acids. By the time they come out, we wash them off. So it's not going to benefit. If you're giving it in, it will come out and condition. So what is most required for their coat condition is a metal brush, brushing every day at least for five minutes. You start with 15 mm. minutes at the puppy. By the time they grow up, it's going to be five minutes. And remember to give them a brush when you take them out for a walk. So that people who have concern that my dog's hair falls in the house, you normally give them a three time walk a day, take them out to a playground, take them out to a place where there are no people around, brush them well to and fro, bring them back. So all the dead hair in the last six hours has fallen out. So when they okay. come back, him will or no hair fall. When we do not do it is when your dog tells you you have to do it by keep they keep on scratching. That's because it's telling you indirectly that you haven't groomed me properly today. Right. So that's the way they could tell you. So another thing is that if they're turning around to, to, to hold their tail, it's not to tell you that you didn't groom the tail. It's to tell you that it's time for deworming. So that's oh. another way about it. They would want to catch on their tail, not as a game, not because they're a sporting dog, because they have irritation in their uh, the backside that there are worms who are moving around. So if you've already done a deworm, given a deworm dose, and they're still doing it, shows that it's time to repeat it, maybe less than three months, but yes, the worms are still there. That's the reason why they would do that. So grooming, you'll have to brush them every day, at least for once or twice when you take them out for a walk, using a metal brush, make it a habit. Second, if you're washing them regularly, wash them with plain water, not hot water. Second, use of soap and shampoos could be the mildest possible and not very often. You can give them a weekly bath, fortnightly bath with water. Use soap and shampoo rarely. So it always helps to retain the oil in them. And because you're grooming them every day, a couple of things, the scalp oil gets onto the hair. Second thing is that there is aeration between their scalp to the air, hair. Yeah. Scalp to the hair. So it doesn't smell. A lot of people feel that my dog is stinking. That's because you haven't groomed them properly. It's not the dog who's stinking. It is we as owners who did not groom them, did not brush them. Or if we are, we are using the wrong brush. So every day grooming, enough exercise, washing them with normal water is the best thing to do. All right. And let's talk about the nutritional needs for a Labrador now. Poultry feeds or 
fish foods or fish food is not the food we put to the fish aquarium foods that have a lot of fish related diet in them are always the best one so you the, the food you are giving them you can turn around your the bag of food and also see there like uh, pro, pro plan of purina would have what are the ingredients because they need high lean meat so lean meat comes normally from fish or from poultry uh, high re red meat is something that they do not require much so when there is if we are meat eaters it's great you can give them if not it is always better that you go for a plan that is a formulated diet for your dog because it clearly knows there is somebody who's going to sit back understand the diet and the nutrition for your particular dog and that is what comes in the bag now there's another question sir some bags have written 200 to 250 so do we give 250 per meal per day it is clearly written there and whatever is written here what they have they may not have mentioned is the amount of exercise what we do is perfect sir as written there you also give uh, uh, thank you for pet fed thank you prerna pro plan for getting dog guru to tell us 6 to 12 months our dog is 27 kilos 450 gram of meals we give them twice very good and then that is the meal and then they get around uh, 12 to 20 times of treats now that is also a meal for the dog any solid food that gets into their body turns out to a meal you are correct just remember your dogs especially labradors are food driven dogs so they will always ask for food and what we think is that oh you are looking at me what was i doing i was thinking of ordering food and you're looking at me. So you also want food? I will give you food. No, it doesn't go that way. They ask you for your attention. They ask you for exercise. They ask you for your presence. They ask you to give them a game to play with, a mind game, a body game, a physical game. So every time your dog looks at you or looks into the kitchen does not mean that they're asking for food. So this is act, whatever is mentioned there, provided you still with this, give them 40 minutes of running. We have a big yard. I have a 100 by 100 by half, a, half an acre of a bungalow. My dog is always left free. That is not exercise. Exercise is running for 40 continuous minutes. We take him for my driver, my watchman takes him for an hour of walking. That is not exercise. Where the dog's nose is down, he's swelling the floor and slowly grazing around with his nose. That does not come <coughs> under exercise. Exercise is particularly running. Now, if we do not have a neighborhood where we can walk them, you can, because coming back to their origin, sporting breed, they are retrievers again, Labrador retrievers. You can train them to fetch a ball back, throw a ball, make a play place where you can play with them 20 minutes. So you're sitting on the couch, throwing the ball, he gets it back, you throw it back. So you don't exercise yourself, turn out to be fat and plumpy like the dog guru. But then yes, at least your dog's going to be fit. So that's the way you can, a well-trained dog is so well-trained that you don't have to move, but give enough exercise for your dog. Uh, that was on the light note. See to it that your dog gets optimum 40 minutes of running, which is very important. And it is running. Dogs would obviously tell you after 10 minutes that I'm tired, I would want to stop. If you stop there 10 minutes from them, they're again running around all over your house and they do not get enough exercise. So make it a point. What do we do when my dog stops fetching the toy? we don't stop there it is just like 30 to 40 minutes every student had a period of math then comes science then comes english similarly if your dog stop playing at 10 15 minutes change the toy it does not stop the game <coughs> make it more exciting if he stops listening to you remember what the best thing you could do is change the treat that you were giving that smells different keep your treats and toys in airtight containers so that they don't lose interest on them as what I mean, even the toys your dog plays with, your your Kong, your ball, your uh, Frisbee or your tug rope, once they're done with it, keep them in airtight bags, seal them and keep them so that the smell remains there for the dog and the dog, next time it comes out, he likes to go play with them. If we leave it around them, then they lose value on it. Okay. All right, that makes good sense. Uh, very good tips and tricks for all uh, parents of Labradors. Everyone should li listen to these tricks very carefully. These are things that honestly, you know, no one tells you uh, when you get a dog home. This is something, you know, you learn over time or you have to have an expert like you to tell us about this. So that's really good to know. Uh, 
I have another uh, trivia question. This is my full and final trivia question, everybody. This is question number three. So please listen carefully. The question is, what is the official breed name for Labradors? Okay. So what is the official breed name for Labradors? Option one, Labrador Retriever. Option two, Labrador Shepherd. Okay. Put in your answers in the comment section below. Coming back to uh, our chat, Amrut, uh, the next thing that I'd like to know now is what are the most common health issues that can be found in Labradors? And how can one, you know, how should a parent be prepared for them? What should a parent look out for? See, basically, the best thing would be before you select a pup, understand if you can physically afford them not only financially what is physical affording like i told you if you can give them the optimum exercise may not be day one but much later when they require from the puppyhood you'll have to socialize them well so that you can give them good exercise much later one health concerns to be prepared rather than being prepared for the health the common health concerns i'll uh, mention them hip dyslexia elbow dyslexia arthritis obesity these are common concerns that labradors get now the reason for all this yes hip and elbow dyslexia is a genetical disorder now if we are able to give them proper optimum exercise depending on the concern they have then we could contain the problem symptomatic wise and do not let the dog get paralyzed with the concern of hip or elbow dyslexia because when you're selecting a puppy if you can select a puppy who's at least at least seven to eight weeks old it is okay. a lot of learning that happens with the mother when the pup is with them till at least eight weeks so one is that second getting your dog's anatomy checked by a veterinary doctor before you bring them back home also helps to a great extent because yes i do understand that that younger puppy you would not know their uh, genetical concerns like hip or elbow dyslexia but at least the doctor could check if they're strong job or joints so that later even if they do develop something that has got a genetical concern the cons their after effects would not be that high now if genetical disorders are uh, narrowed down then all the other the obesity their arthritis their concerns all or even with elbow and hip dyslexia the symptoms would increase or the pain in the dog would increase, problems would increase with weight. So going back to the first two chats we had, come exercise, must, second comes there, uh, food. So optimum food is not only what is written on the bag, what is written on the bag is for dogs who get good exercise. And what is also not written on the bag is the multiple meals you give them as treats. I was chopping carrots, he came and looked at me, so I gave him a carrot. I was having chai, he came to me, I gave him a biscuit. So this also turns out to a meal. Remember multiple feeding, you're also leading to multiple wear and tear of their digestion system where they have very clearly mentioned how many meals in every bag two meals for an adult dog is great provided you're giving them optimum exercise if not even one good meal is best which otherwise means their kidney their livers their intestines are manufactured to digest food once in a day when we do multiple times your multiple times they're getting wear and tear they're used so when that's why at the beginning i mentioned if you are balanced as an owner your dog is going to live 12 years whereas in, in india you get to a veterinary hospital dog who's eight years is old he's not old you have made him old by overusing his intestine kidney livers to process multiple times of food thinking that you love them if you love them you need them to be with you for the maximum number of years. Have dogs lived for more than 12? Yes. I have Labradors who lived up to 14 years themselves. So if you're not able to give them exercise, at least weekly, twice, thrice, if there are places where they can swim around you, take them for a swim. If you're blessed like Mumbai, you've got beaches. If not, today there are a lot of swimming centers, but also remember you're not pushing them into water. Even day one, you will have to get them to the pool, not let them in. They let them feel comfortable, let them eat, come to the swimming pool, sit beside it, eat and go back. Come to the swimming pool, play with the toys and go back. By two or three days, once the toy falls inside the water and the dog is able to walk in, they should day one, day two, day three, they should be able to reach the ground. So one of the four feet is reaching the ground. 
in the water, which means there's only a feet, a feet and a half of water. Slowly it raises, so they start pedaling. You see mm -hmm. videos of dog actually swimming. They are pedaling. It's like the pedal boat. They are not splashing. Dogs with arthritis, we are talking about health disorders. Arthritis, bone concerns like elbow and hip dyslexia. If your dog is struggling in water, splashing water, it could lead to dislocation because your dog is not enjoying it. Maybe you're enjoying it, not your dog. Primarily, they have arthritis, which is a bone concern. They have hip or elbow dyslexia, genetical concern. They are overweight and you push them into water just because somebody who is not known on training dogs to swim. But Labradors are born swimmers, aren't they? Yes, which means they will not drown, but they're not enjoying it. So make it enjoyable. Let them carry a toy in their mouth. Let them slowly get introduced. Once they're introduced, once they know that they can pedal comfortably in water, this, this is a zero to seven day program. Post that, your dog, the moment they see water, they themselves will jump in. That is what is required. Not we pushing them in with a body belt and yeah. then holding them back and all those things. So get them to swim. If they are not able to get them to run, get them to run if you can. That's the best. And running, when I mean running, when I mean exercise, it is before getting a disease. Not okay. after they are obese, not after they have arthritis. So if you exercise them well, keep any dog, especially Labradors, as close mm -hmm. you can to nature. What do I mean? If they can be given optimum walking on sand, on mud, or on green grass, that's the best. Not on okay. concrete, not on marbles, not on tar roads. Tar roads has been proven to give arthritis to, to people who walk on tar roads itself for people. So imagine dog, they're more nature friendly. Yeah. So allow them, allow them to exercise, run around on mud, sand, on green grass, especially if they have the concerns like arthritis. So it reduces much better when they are with nature compared to being on tar roads or marble or granite and concrete. All right, makes sense. Okay, so um, you know Labradors, as we understand them, they're a large and energetic breed. So how do we train them in good, good canine manners? See, you can start early. When we say start early, it's not that train your dog to sit down, sleep in 30, 35 days. Start with the toilet habits first. Get their toilet habit fixed. Once that is done, uh, they are good learners. Now, what if somebody does ask me, Dog Guru, what is the right age I can train my dog? Or my dog is an adult. You don't have to ask Dog Guru. Shakespeare himself has told an old dog can be taught new tricks. So a dog, training a dog is not 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening, or a trainer coming home three times monthly or weekly and taking the dog out and training, or trainer training in front of you and you practicing it for 10 minutes a day. Training is the communication between the dog and the owner. So every day, every minute, anything that you communicate to the dog, you're training him for the same. For example, my dog is barking at somebody and I ask him, why are you barking? He's not going to tell you why he's one. Second, you did not talk to him when he was quiet. So now you're training him that every time you bark, I will also join you and bark. So both of us bark together. There is non-stop barking. You are telling keep quiet. He's doing bow bow. You are telling keep quiet. He's doing bow bow. And end of it, you give him a toy or a treat to stop. He did stop to eat. But you also trained him there of any age that the more you bark, I will keep barking with you. And later end of it, I'll give you a treat. So obviously they will keep on barking and your neighbors complain. We complain that when their guests at home, my dog keeps barking because we have trained your dog to do it. Yeah. We have to identify training for any dog, big or small, is the communication. And what we require from them is keep quiet, settle down, sit gently, lie down when we are doing our work, which they normally do for a long hours in the day. And when they are doing it, we punish them by ignoring them. We have to give them the energy or the toy or the treat or the talking or the attention when they are just keeping quiet because that is what we expect them to do. Correct. But we only talk to them when they bark or when they pull out a wire, when they pick up your shoes, when they go on the couch. So we are telling them that that is when you get attention. We are training them to tell that go on top of it. But I told him, no, don't go. If he understood English, then he would have sat along <laughs> with you, heard to the whole webinar which we are doing now, and learned from that itself. Right? He would only yeah. understand the energy. A dog, the worst beating a dog can get is ignoring. And we as unknown, not knowing the fact as owners, we beat them with ignoring them only, only when they are quiet. 
and we expect them to keep quiet now when you're walking your dog he's comfortably walking with you keep talking to him tell him any story doesn't make a difference tell him i'm going to kill you today i'll put poison to your food i'll put it at a throw you from the balcony he's happily walking with you because he doesn't understand what you're telling but all he understands if i'm walking beside him he keeps talking but the moment i pulled he stopped talking he turned around started walking back which means tell the dog that you'll get a lot of continuous consistent energy from me attention from me for walking beside me whereas what we do is the other way around we just keep quiet when the dog is walking and the moment he starts pulling we are like no don't pull come back this is not what you do oh my god no don't pull come back this is what uh, you need to do 12 13 treat of words i got only when i pulled till then nobody spoke to me mm. right and we expect them not to pull but we are okay. telling them our action and our communication are the two different poles so we need to tell them that anything a dog is doing that is right for you give them attention give them love for that and ignore the wrong behavior automatically a dog would get trained to what you want you don't need a trainer for it one second thing whenever you want to give lot of love and affection to your dog tell them to do something you come after 8 hours you know your dog was waiting he's jumping at the door he's wagging his tail stay at the door ask him to sit wait he will do all behaviors bark yell scratch the door jump here and there and finally sit wait for that 2 minutes he will sit then open the door and hug him so he understands that every time four days you do it of any age of a dog you go behind the door he'll sit in front of the door and wait for you to hug him because he understands they will hug me only when i sit what we have done the day we got a puppy home because they are labrador they are cute and cuddly come here come here come here we went to the dog picked him up and put them on our chest so we have told the dog that as they grew the dog grew but what you taught him from a puppy is that when i tell come one you don't come i come because that's <laughs> what we did yeah and second when i come i put you on my chest so the dog is now i'm grown up don't worry you tell come i will wait for you to come and the moment you come to me i will come on your chest myself and then sir my dog my dog knocked on my wife my son fell down we got a labrador because they're children friendly but two times my son fell down one time he hit his head to the wall now what do we do he keeps on jumping you taught him that the same puppy if you had bowed down and pet the puppy he would have understood that every time i sit they pet me so as an adult dog he would have sat and waited you to pet him correct and it was a puppy you should have told come and move back rather than going to the pup come here come here come here come here come here and the puppy runs to you and <laughs> wait for them to sit down bend down and pet so he understand that i need to be on the floor not on the chest correct so training is communication between dog and the handler and any dog of any age can be trained only trick there is give them attention give them love for the action you want and ignore the unwanted action all right that makes good sense i think if we just follow it correctly then we should be able to get through and have a dog who has good okay. canine manners and a parent who has good parent manners right so uh before we move on to the questions from the audience which are quite a few before we move on to those i would just like to announce the contest answer there was a contest that was run on purina pro plan india's uh, page on their page on 23rd of february so the question was is it true or false that labradors were originally used for fishing so amrit can you just give us the answer what is the correct answer and tell us a little about it I have been consistently telling fisherman's dog, fisherman's dog, sporting event, catching fish, which very clearly tells us that yes, they were used for fishing, and yes is the answer. And they were used for fishing because one, they were good at water. Second, they are uh, they had the sporting instinct in them to catch onto the fish immediately. And even if the fish, uh, they could swim, go, and if we shoot the fish, it's a big fish. They they probably fished it or they've shot it. lot of times there is something called bombing that happens as in there is this pataka bomb that is put into the water and there's a bud sound and then they put a net and they get a lot of fishes if people have observed that that is because fishes have ultrasonic ears so a small cracker a loud noise inside water they die because of their ears getting damaged so it's easy to get a lot of fishes so earlier loud noise is made and let your labrador into water he will go get the floating fish or the struggling fish oh, okay. back oh, okay. so you didn't have you need not have to get into water you can go on a boat get your labrador to jump go get the fish and come back that's how things used to work 
Oh, okay. All right. That's lovely. So we have the correct answer for this one. And now moving on to the audience questions. Okay. So we have uh, Somdat who is asking that um, my lab is 2.5 years old, but he has the habit of biting anything that comes across. Please suggest. Right. In 24 hours, we would have at least 24 seconds or 24 minutes that your Labrador stops biting something. The moment he does that, hug him, cuddle him, give him a small piece of a treat. Now, identify one or two toys for him. Preferably the tugged sort of toys. That is his toys. Now, you can play with him at some time. Keep them out aside. Every time he goes to bite something that he shouldn't be biting, you will not go there. You will take his toy and start moving it around the ground and start talking to the toy. Hi, toy. You like it? Where is your dog? Your dog is not here. He will leave what he's biting and come back to the toy. And when he bites the toy, encourage him and behave like the toy is poisonous. Take it out of him, throw it, hide it, pull it out of him, tug him. So you engage him to play with his toy, whereas you are ignoring him when he plays with that. We obviously can't let him eat away your expensive shoes or a wire or your carpet. So what do we do? We don't go there. We go to his toy, take it and start playing with it where he leaves that and comes here. He has to understand that if I play with my toy, they join with me. They make it a game. But if I'm playing with anything else, they go and play with my toy. They don't come here. Okay. All right. But what we normally do, we give them a bone, we give them a toy. He sits down and target. We go and do our work. When he goes to the carpet, we immediately, no, don't buy the carpet. This is not what you have to buy. Oh, are you hungry? I'll give you a biscuit. So we are telling you, buy the carpet, you get a biscuit. You buy the carpet, you get a biscuit. And tomorrow, he's a food-driven dog. He'll always keep biting carpets. He'll always keep getting biscuits. Correct. Correct. Right. So, and after he stops playing with his toy, remember to lift it, keep it aside. He has to value the toy. So keep three toys Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The Monday toy comes back only on Thursday. Okay. So there is value in the toy for him. If you keep 100 toys, he will not go for the 100 toys because he bit all the 100 toys. And when he bit the 100 toys, none of you spoke to him. None of you pulled it out. None of you pampered him. But you only pampered him when you went to the hundred and first thing that was your mobile phone charger. Right? Or your okay. shoes. Or your laptop bag. So he thinks that if I bite his laptop bag, they're going to join with me in the game. But if I go to his toy, nobody's going to talk to me. So we'll have Got to it. do the other way around. Keep a toy. And every time he bites the toy, behave like it's a snake he's biting. Yeah. Run to him. Pull it out. Push it. Hide it. Do everything that you know excites him. So he always knows that that's what has to be bitten. And whenever he goes back to something he shouldn't be biting, you don't go there. You go to his toy and start playing with it. He will leave that and come himself. Got it. Got it. Next question is from Sarthak Mishra. He asks that, do labs have a weak immunity? What community? Weak immunity. No. It is not that Labradors are weak and immune. It is the Labrador that you have if that particular dog is just imported from a country like Canada or from America or from different origins. They are accustomed to a climate there. So what happens is that we want to go for imported breeds. So an imported Labrador would come from a different origin. They are not used to, it is just like a cousin of yours who is born and brought up in America. They come here, you always know they walk around with a bislary bottle in hand because they can't have the water here, which we normally have at hotels. Because they'll immediately have cough and cold, but we are used to this. All right. So similarly, if your Labrador is an imported breed or a breed from a different origin or was born to in India, their ancestors stayed in India, but they were inbred. It was father and daughter were mated together or son and mother were mated together or brother, sister were mated together. This is inbreeding. That is when immune uh, dogs who are less immune are born. OK. Not otherwise. As a breed, it, there's nothing that they are uh, uh, less immune. OK. All right. Uh, Ria Yadav is asking uh, that, can you recommend a diet for a lab who is one year old for weight gain? You don't need to give him a diet. If he's one year old and he's a Labrador and if she's selling it's a he, then find out if you can actually arrange mating for him by the time he's two years. If you're not able to arrange, get him sterilized because the dogs, are, sterilized dogs always live longer, behave much better. However, however trained a dog is, their intelligence and their trainability is normally hijacked by their hormones. 
and male dog wants to mate every day, 365 days. Whether it's a Pomeranian, Bernard, Indy, whoever, it doesn't make a difference for the dog. So what happens there is that a lot of dogs in India, because they're unsterilized, they die with testicular cancer, cell cancer, and different sort of concerns that they come up with, where there is less or no treatment, good treatment. So here what happens if you get your dog sterilized, one, his behavior activity level reduces, he will put on weight himself. Diet need not be given to put on weight. Now, despite that, no, we already have a female or we have a neighbor who's going to give their female with for our meal for mating. We will not get them sterilized. Then start giving him good exercise and good lean meat. Could be fish meat, could be poultry meat or, or balanced diet from uh, companies like Purina Pro Plan. So what happens that just giving him food and making him sit down, he will not put on weight. He's a year old. It's his teenage now. He will either way put on weight after his two years. So you just have to wait patiently for him to put on weight. But if you start exercising him now, he will put on healthy weight. That will be muzzle weight. It will not be bone weight or uh, sorry, it will not be fat weight. So we mm -hmm. want him to be healthy, not fat. So start giving him exercise and see to it that he will put on weight. All right. Next question is from Jordan. He says that he has a three year old lab and he has a major, major concern that whenever he takes his dog to the wet clinic, he gets very aggressive. So is there a way to calm him down when they're taking him to the clinic? I'll give you two analogies here. One, I went to the hospital with my wife to, me, uh, to meet uh, a child that was born. Um, Amrut. Uh... Okay, so there, I can't hear Amrut very, Sorry, Amrut, uh, we lost you there. I'll yeah. come again? Yeah, once again, please. Audible? Yes, yes. Right. I'm going with, traveling with my wife to a hospital to see my brother or her brother being blessed with a child. So it's a lovely, good thing that we're going to meet. We have a nephew or a niece that's born. So both of us happily go there, meet them and come back. I don't console my wife for anything. The same time I'm going with my wife to the same hospital, same ward to the same person who's met with an accident. So what would I tell her? Don't worry, I'm there. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Don't worry. I'll hold her hand. I'll put my arms on her shoulder. Tell her not to worry. Or there's a death is when I tell them, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. This has happened. It was unfortunate. It was an accident. Now, why do we as dog owners tell the wrong thing to the dog every time we go to the veterinary shop? If you're going there, not because it was an accident. You're going there to get his ears cleaned or a vaccination done or he's not well or for a deworming, for a grooming then why do you keep on telling your dog, don't worry, I'm there, nothing's going to happen. Don't worry, I'm there, nothing's going to happen. That emotion itself tells the dog that the incident is supposed to be worried about. You sit in a veterinary hospital, every owner is going to hug their dog, no, 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 nothing's going to happen, kuch yoga, beta, kuch yoga. No, 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 doctor is not going to do anything. Indirectly, you're preparing the dog that something drastic is going to happen. Being a dog, he has to protect himself. One. Second thing, you don't socialize your dog. So when we go to the hospital is when your dog first time sees so many other dogs. Now you are scared where that dog will bite your dog or your dog will bite that dog. Now you are a Labrador owner, you are scared where the Rottweiler will bite your dog. But if there's a pug there, you will feel your Labrador will bite the pug. The moment we are scared, we give the same energy to the dog through the leash. So that your dog is like, don't worry, I'll kill him. Don't be scared, I'll kill him. <laughs> Your dog will never understand that you are scared of your dog. Because for him, if you were scared, you would not put me in the same car and drove me 40 kilometers. Yeah. Which means you are not scared of me. But you got scared the moment you saw the other dog there. That is a 35 mm -hmm. days old pug. That's as big as a capsule. Don't worry, I'll swallow him. So the dog starts getting aggressive. And the more the dog gets aggressive, more we are going to tell him it's the right behavior. Tell him, don't worry, nothing's going to happen. Don't worry, nothing's going to happen. He's like, you don't worry, I'll bite him. You don't worry, I'll bite him. He ne can never understand that we are scared of his behavior. And right. there are two more things that add here. Every time you put your dog in to the car, if possible, if it's a close by veterinary doctor, take your dog to the hospital. Just make him roam around there. Go up, buy his food, buy his show, buy his shampoo, come out. Let the dog know that going to a veterinary hospital is not only to get myself pricked. We always put the dog into the car, go to the hospital. Otherwise, we don't put him in the car at all. 
so we've also trained the dog that you come into the car you will get prick that also makes him aggressive yeah. and last but not the least dogs are super sensitive they have six senses they have seven senses more than what we have they are going into a hospital where two minutes ago there was a death three minutes ago there was a dog was crying Four minutes ago, a dog was operated. Five minutes ago, the dog underwent suture. Six minutes ago, there's a rabies dog here on the table. So there's so much of trauma in that particular place. Pretty obvious, this dog will get aggressive to be self-protective. So what we do, keep him occupied. If he's comfortable, keep talking to him. The moment he gets aggressive, the moment he gets angry, do not talk to the dog. Ignore the behavior. Distract him. And please tell, go to a doctor, veterinary doctor who is confident. Who can give five minutes time let the doctor talk to the dog let him give him a treat there are a lot of doctors like that they get used to the dog then they get the dog on the table whereas if it's, if it's somebody like somebody else is going to tie the mouth of the dog somebody is going to put the dog on the table and the doctor is only come and go to prick pretty obvious the dog doesn't know who's pricking he doesn't even know him all he knows is that every time this person comes i'm going to have a hole in my skin and who's going yeah. to be happy about it <laughs> right so the next time you go there just take the dog ask the doctor to give a biscuit come back that's all go get a biscuit the doctor feeds come back couple of times you go and so the dog understands. i'm going in the car i go to this place it's a traumatic place it's like a graveyard it's filled of uh, evil or spirits of dogs there spirits of cats there and there's one yelling who's just going to die in the next few minutes despite all that i got there i got a biscuit and he came back first three four times he may not eat it then he starts eating it so he gets used to it. So the next time it will come to four, five, ten sessions that you go to the hospital, your dog is drooling, looking at the doctor. He's like, give me the biscuit, give me the biscuit. But he doesn't know he got a prick at the backside. And then he still got a biscuit. Got it, got it. All right. Uh, next question is from Amit. Uh, he says that my three-year-old lab is very enthusiastic. He pounces onto the guests to play with them and welcome them. Later, he is calm. What to do about it? Fair. So please take him on a leash when there are guests, allow him near the footwear. Smelling their footwear, your dog will understand, are there dog friendly people? There are people who are scared of dogs. There are people who hate dogs. Do they have dogs at home? They don't have dogs. Let him utilize all his high energy or at least exhaust half of it with their footwear. That normally he does when they meet them. He wants to smell them and find out what are the... <laughs> all that will reduce with the shoe part of it. Ask him to sit, tell him to down, tell the guest, put him behind the door. Don't tie him, put him behind the door. Let them stand at the door. Let them ask him to sit, give him a treat and come inside. Give him a treat and come inside. Four of them give him a treat for sit and come inside. When they go there, he will obviously sit in front of them to get a treat. Okay. It okay. also depends on the guest. If I come into Amit's house, I will not even talk to his dog. Whereas if there is another guest, you, Amit, where's your dog? He's so lovely, you, darling. Obviously, the dog, you're giving the same energy, he will give the same back. Is he friendly? Is he friendly? Is he friendly? He's like, bah, 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 bah. he'll always jump on you. Right? Ask the guest to stay out. It is calm, confident. The more calm and confident your guest and you are, the dog also will be the same. He wants to chant right, on the chest. Right. Just wait. Let him stand on the chest. Keep a treat in your hand. Let him smell. Bring it down. He'll go down. Let him wait for him to sit. Give it to him. 10 times you do it, the 11th time a guest comes, he'll sit and look at them. And he gets a okay. treat for it. Remember to give him a treat for it. Or at least a good boy if you don't have a treat there. Otherwise, he's sitting. Ah, bete ka, bete ka, aajo, aajo. Come in, come in, come in. Then the next time, he's obviously going to be super active and jump on. All right, got it. Then there is uh, Rupsa who asked that her lab is 10 months old. He doesn't like bathing at all. He gets irritated when we pour water on his body, but he likes water. Uh, he bites forcefully when the water is being poured on him. He is getting a bit aggressive day by day. What can be done? Get him used to, you told, you're contradicting. You're telling he likes water, but he gets yeah. aggressive with poured on her. So what we'll be doing is, what does he like to do if he likes a toy? or if he likes his food. Every time he's having his food, he's eating food, put a wet towel on him. So he understands it gets cold when I'm eating food. Then slowly there's water on him, a little bit, not too much, not a bucket of water on him. That he'll get scared, he'll leave the food and run away. So it's he's having food and he's having water. He's having food, he's having water. Get him used to food and water, food and water together. Later when you're giving him a bath, let it be the meal time. There's a jug of water on him, gets a handful of uh, food. Another jug of water, another handful. So 
his concentration should be on eating food rather than the water nothing happens immediately it's going to be a slow and steady change because normally what we do we take them to the bathroom or the balcony tie him tightly there and then start pouring water on him he the the action itself tells us there's something intimidating happening because it normally doesn't happen every day it's once in a while so now we'll start make may uh, make it happening every day we we'll start feeding him in the bathroom where there is water and he's eating food there is a little bit of water poured on his feet or on his back there's a cold towel mm -hmm. dip it in water just put it on him first time mm -hmm. squeeze it and put it on him then little squeeze it little put it on him fourth or fifth day there's full of water dripping on it on him so he gets he forgets the water part of it and enjoys the meal part of it because he's hungry okay. the moment it's over stop meal is over stop water exercise so the next time he feels hungry he should go and stand near a bucket of water like pour it on me and give me food not make things not. enjoyable not forcing it all right good next question is with janvi sharma she says that we have a 3 bhk apartment with marble flooring and we are looking to adopt a lab puppy I have read about labradors developing arthritis due to certain types of flooring, and if they are living in confined spaces, this makes us a little worried. What would you advise? Pick up a labrador who is at least three months old, so that his foot or his boning at the foot joints are a little better. Now that does not mean that these three months he was on another house with a marble floor, and from there he came here. It's not going to do any justice. He should preferably be from a mother who is normally on mud or grass, at least four to ten hours a day with the puppy. So the puppy gets ten hours of walking on grass between thirty days to ninety days. That gives a lot of strength to their joints, and they should be well fed with nutrition because that to the mother while she is pregnant, then while she is. Uh, feeding and then to the puppies good nutrition from the day even before she got, she got conceived the puppies till the day puppies come to their house is very important so proper feed nutritious feed and being on sand mud or green grass for the first 30 days to the 90th day for the puppy gives them a lot of boning joint support so after their 3 months the there would be a very less chance or minimal chances of them developing arthritis for the marble flooring what you could do is today you get pharmaca sheets like the wooden sheets that could be put to probably one of your room where your puppy is still going to continue for the next 3 to 6 months in your house post with that can be removed it's just a layer that's going to be come that can be removed so during the first uh, at least the next 3 months it's going to be they're not slipping it would slip in other places so you bring them out only for an hour or two half an hour morning half an hour afternoon half an hour evening to play with you guys there rest of the time let your dog be in that place or the balcony place where there is no slippery floor post which you can get that remote and they can be anywhere after the 6 to 8 months they will not slip they will not fall they will not have arthritis because they are on marble but remember oh, okay as they grow the number of 40 40 minutes of twice exercise they throw their life preferably should be on green grass or on sand or on mud Okay. All right. Great. So thank you, Amrut. Uh, this gets us to uh, the end of our session. Uh, we've taken up a couple of questions as well. Uh, I also have the trivia uh, winners here now. The contest, the questions that I asked throughout the session. I have three lucky winners, and uh, the winners are Pallavi Bhattacharya, Ridhima Grover, and Neha Rati. Congratulations, all three of you. Please drop in your details to Purina Profile India on their Facebook page. Just write a quick message and drop in your details there, and your uh, gifts will be on the way very soon. Thank you, Amru. Thank you so much for a very lovely, very informative session. You're most welcome. Uh, I really hope. Most welcome. I should thank Petfed. Thank Petfed to uh, give me a platform to meet more clients and uh, help them out with their questions and queries. It's always better that we think and then decide rather than decide and then think about the decision made. So, all Labrador present owners, future owners, remember it is a balanced diet, balanced exercise. and balance energy and attention that you give them to have a lovely compatible asset with you correct that was absolutely right you know we should think before making a decision this is why we're doing this chat so that we're able to impart some knowledge about this i really hope that we were able to help somebody about this and if you missed this session people this session is available as a video on purina proplan's facebook page so please go there you can just 
you know go through the whole session again and we will be back very soon with more informative videos thank you amrit see you on the next day thank you all take care bye 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 bye